Welcome to this episode of Mo Money. I'm Alexander Paul Morris, your host, and again we have Daryl Montgomery with us from the NY Investing Meetup, which has currently about 1,200 members who listen very attentively to Daryl's thoughts and perspectives on the economy and the markets. In this episode, we're going to be discussing a little bit about the overseas picture and how the uh, foreign markets have fared in light of the recent rate cut by the Fed. Thank you for having me, Alex. Thank you uh, for coming on again. The uh, overseas markets uh, have had a very important reaction after the Fed rate cut. The Fed is basically pumping money into the financial system, and it's uh, showing up in the United States market, but it's showing up even more significantly in the Asian markets. And this could turn out to be a very, very serious problem, even in the near future, and certainly within a few months at the latest at most. Um, what happened is that the uh, Chinese market, the internal markets, and that's Shanghai and Shenzhen, are basically having what is called a blow-off top in technical analysis. And this is what this means is the market is moving straight up. It's insane. It's gone up like, what, 50% in, in a month? Um, Some of these markets or more? Yes, yes. Uh, Hong Kong has certainly gone up close to 50% in a month. Uh, what has happened is the Chinese government has linked its markets to Hong Kong for the first time. This happened only about two months ago. It made an announcement that it would allow citizens of China to invest money in Hong Kong. Uh, previously, they only were, after this time, they've only been allowed to invest internally in China. Now, what happened, uh, a lot of uh, Chinese stocks actually trade in Hong Kong as well as on the mainland. Created a big price adjustment there as people are trying to arbitrage between the uh, two countries, the stock prices. Well, yes, in some cases, the, the same stock in Hong Kong would be half the price or less as the same stock in the mainland. What the Chinese government did, they made this announcement and then they reneged on it immediately and said, we need more time to think about it. We'll be doing it somewhat later. So this allowed people in the rest of the world to like start buying these stocks in Hong Kong that were only half as much or less in the same stock in China, being once the Chinese pe people were allowed to do this, they would start buying the stock in Hong Kong. So this has caused a mass move, upward movement in Hong Kong, and is actually spread to uh, all, basically all of East and South Asia. So you have this massive out of control bubble in the mainland, which can burst and create all sorts of horrible after effects. And now it has been linked to uh, Hong Kong and to the rest of Asia, and it's likely to uh, have effects in the entire rest of the world. Yeah, to put a real perspective on this, too, it's like if anyone you know watches some of these stocks, uh, Chinese stocks that trade in America, um, for example, China Natural Resources stock, it was CHNR, uh, was a $10 stock even a week ago, and all of a sudden it exploded up to like $47 a share. You just get these unbelievably crazy moves, and they're just not sustainable. Uh, yes, and if you wish to participate in this, you better be a very, very short-term trader. But the, this is a result of what the Fed has done. If you look at any chart, you will see in mid-August when the Fed had its uh, discount rate cut, a bottom was put in and suddenly uh, these markets started moving straight up. I mean, the Fed, this is just the direct result of the Fed pumping in liquidity. It's extremely irresponsible is going to have disastrous consequences eventually. Another crazy thing I think they've been doing now is in China, they actually wanted to put in price controls. There's one thing that we were talking about too, how it seems like for uh, Americans, our greatest export at this point has now become inflation. Um, and China, in order to help control that, is beginning to institute price controls which are never sustainable. That's one of the biggest mistakes any government can make. Yes, they're going to find that out soon enough. Uh, they print, uh, had to start these price controls because uh, they pegged their currency, the yuan, to the U.S. dollar. Now, allegedly in 2005, they dropped this peg, but they've only slightly, slightly dropped it. They haven't dropped it in reality. And because their currency can barely move um, and prices cannot adjust, uh, you wind up having lots and lots of inflation in China itself. And the government, to try and keep uh, control of the population, has put on price controls. Now, this has never worked for any government in the past, and it's not going to work now. 
Now, um, it's not just China that has uh, its currency pegged to the U.S. dollar, by the way. It's many Asian countries and many Middle Eastern countries, particularly. And what is happening in Vietnam was forced to drop its peg after the Fed rate cut because it was proving to be too inflationary. And that brings up a lot of other uh, questions. Who's going to be next? Oh, uh, there are rumors that Saudi Arabia is certainly on this list. Were, it did not lower rates. Um, after the Fed did, which would have been a normal response for a country with the currency pegged to the dollar. So this is really scary. So are you telling us that there's a possibility that we might no longer be the center of the financial universe? Well, the dollar is in a lot of trouble. It is the reserve currency for the world, and it is in the beginning of stages of losing that reserve status. And the implications for the United States, of the United States economy, the United States bond and stock markets are quite frightening. Thank you very much for all your uh, insights again, as always, Daryl, and um, we look forward to uh, having you again for another exciting episode of Mo Money. Thank you, Alexander.